So I'm out here in the middle of the night because I want to show you some interesting effects that have to do with the way that we transfer energy from place to place in our high voltage power lines. And the reason that I'm out here at night is because just like when you have high voltage bleeding off of, say, a Tesla coil, you can get a fluorescent light bulb to light up. So this fluorescent light bulb isn't attached to anything, but if I uh, hold it up right above my head here, you can kind of see that it's glowing. And I mean, you can tell that I'm not connecting, it's actually grounding out through me. If you can see that it's lit up to this point here and then below it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't do that. Um, but if it's a little hard to see on camera, I'll explain what this is in a moment. There, that's a bit brighter. So, while I am holding a wire up at the top there, that top wire isn't actually attached to anything. I'm just pointing it up at those uh, high voltage power lines behind me. All right, enough dark. Like I was saying, this is just an ordinary fluorescent tube, but because of the way that we transfer energy from our power stations to our houses, it actually bleeds energy off in the power lines and the powder on the inside of this light bulb is able to fluoresce from the tiny amount of current that's able to bridge the huge resistance of the air between those wires and the ground. Now you saw a minute ago that I kind of pulled out this big old piece of wire. This is just some wire um, for the inside of houses and what I did is I attached it to the end just so that it had a little bit more of a direct line from higher up to uh, ground out and that light, let it light up a little bit more. If you have a multimeter, you can actually measure the amount of voltage that's near one of these big old power lines. Here's my uh, multimeter, Whew, got a little snow on it. The ground wire, I'm just gonna let dangle and I'm going to attach the hot wire to this and you can see already I'm getting more than a volt of energy. All I'm doing is I'm just holding a wire that's not attached to anything and then through my multimeter, and the multimeter is not attached to anything, um, so that the energy is just flowing down through the system to ground. And when I hold it up here, I can get, oop, more than 20 volts. Topped out my meter there. 20, 21 volts, about there. Now you might wonder like, oh my gosh, 21 volts, how is this possibly safe? And the reason that it's safe is because there's just so much resistance in the air that there's no way any significant amount of current can flow through that. Basically, it's well insulated. Because if I switch here from voltage to uh, milliamps, you see MA, milliamps there, and I do the same thing through this wire, I get maybe 0.1 milliamps is actually coming down from those wires through the air, because the air is a really good resistor. And another neat trick that I got on here is I have a frequency, so it's showing kilohertz, KHZ, but we know, at least in the United States here, the uh, alternating current vibrates at about 60 hertz, or 60 times in a second, and you can see already, 0.6, it's picking it up. That's the frequency that is going on in those power lines. But if you don't have a multimeter, another neat trick that you can do is if you have headphones, you can actually hear it. And there's a probably pretty good chance that on my audio here throughout most of this, I have the uh, 60 Hertz uh, tone just kind of coming over everything because my microphone isn't well shielded from the you know amount of radiation that's coming off of here. If I go ahead and get some headphones out, and again, I'm not gonna attach them to anything. I'm just gonna put, uh, one in my ear and take the blank and just hold it up. And you should be able to hear, if you do the same thing, you'll be able to hear a steady hum when you're holding it up. Mm -hmm. I can't hum it. So you might be wondering if there's all of this energy pouring off of our power lines all the time, why we bother to use high voltage at all. So even though there are these effects from using high voltage alternating current to 
move our power from place to place. It actually uses less energy in the transmission when you use a high voltage. So the equation that you would use is you would have a certain amount of power generated at the power generator, which is equal to the power that's demanded, which you can't really change, minus the energy lost in the resistance of the wires themselves. Now this I here, I squared, is actually the current that's going through the wires. And what we want is we want a very, very low current. Now I showed you on my multimeter that the amount of current that's actually coming off of this is also very low, but we try to keep it low in the wires as well. But at the same time, we still need to deliver a fixed amount of power to the end user. And the way that power is written is I current times V uh, equals power. Power is how much energy, how much oomph you actually use. So we have these two things that we can wiggle around here, but that package has to say the same total size. So if we want to reduce the current because of the losses on this part of the equation, the I squared there, that's the same I, if we want to reduce the current, then you need to make the voltage a lot bigger. And so when the voltage is huge, the current is actually very, very tiny for the same amount of energy to same amount of energy, yeah, the same amount of power to get to the end users. And what that does is on this resistive term, that's what the R is, is the resistance of the wire, is that gets smaller when you pump up the voltage. So you might think that it's a little bit strange that near high tension power lines, there's just sort of this general field of oscillating current in the air, but it's such a low current that it really isn't going to affect you. And in addition to that, the way that we have things set up, it actually limits the amount of energy wasted. Despite this, we still waste about 6% of our generated energy just pushing it down the lines. Still, this does offer the opportunity to go and experience some of these effects yourself without having to say, build a Tesla coil in your own house. All you need to do is find power lines that have a high enough power on them. Now, that means the big ones for going long distances, the slightly lower ones you might see in a neighborhood have already been bounced down by a transformer and aren't quite enough to light up a fluorescent light bulb like this one. If you do try this out, um, a thinner tube is better. Um, also, a longer tube is better. And you saw there at the, that I also uh, went ahead and touched a wire on the end. If you get a chance to take a multimeter with you and measure the current, measure the voltage, it's really entertaining and fun. And even if you don't have a multimeter, you can at least take a pair of your headphones and hold it up toward the high voltage power lines and hear the oscillating current. As usual on my blog, I go ahead and explain the details of all these little experiments you can do near high voltage power lines. And if you're into this sort of a thing, go ahead and subscribe for more do-it-yourself science. But you don't have to take my word for it because you can science it. Car got his headlights, which I guess is probably making me better lit, but yeah, that's what's going on. Okay.